Packing and Boeing in it with a Rhino Carbon Fiber Wall Repair Kit. We look in our kit here, we open it up, we have everything we need except for the tools to install the product. Rubber gloves, we have our two-part epoxy. So I'd like to go ahead and take everything out of this kit, put that here on the floor. We have our carbon fiber repaired. We have three of those in every kit. So every kit comes with everything you need to do, three full repairs. You have your brackets, hardware with the brackets, and you have your instructions. Instructions are nice and easy to read. I highly suggest you look through the instructions completely before starting the process. Because you have to remove all the paint off the wall. And you want to make sure you're locating these properly. What I like to do is use your mortar joints here. You have one here and one here. And use that as a guideline to keep them nice and straight. So we've located our, our first strap here. We've grinded the wall. We've used a Bosch dustless grinder with a air, Bosch air scoop system. And we've gr grinded everything off the wall. We've removed the paint and got it ready to install. Make sure we have proper safety equipment. So we want to put our safety glasses on here. We want to check the wall for any caulking. As walls start to bow, sometimes people repair them as they paint them with a little bit of caulking because it's small cracks. So very important that we take that out. We don't take that out. It allows the wall to move backwards. It'll never come any further, but it will go backwards. Because these cracks that we have are small enough that we don't need to do any mortar repair. So if they're much bigger than this, we would actually want to take that mortar joint out with our dustless tuck pointer. So we can rent all these from Home Depot or Lowe's. And then what we're going to do is before we uh, put our carbon fiber up, we'll apply a little extra epoxy here because we have little small cracks to make sure those cracks are filled and they're not going to move backwards. First start with our top bracket. We went ahead and pre-drilled our holes and I suggest you do so. Because a lot of times you end up splitting the sill plate and that's something you don't want to do. So now that we have our bracket attached, we've got our carbon fiber hanging here. We've got it ready to start putting our epoxy on. Remember we want to fill our cracks first. Make sure we got a little extra epoxy in those. We're going to wet the wall down behind the carbon fiber and just lift it up. We're going to lay the carbon fiber in it. And then we're going to work our way down to the bottom. We're going to make sure we get our gloves on first. When you open your epoxy, you always want to do it over top of your box. And you want to save your top because you can put this back in and reuse the epoxy by just using a new mixing tool. Apply our mixing tool by just simply screwing it on. If you have any questions about the cure time of the epoxy, the safety instructions are right on the back of it, and it tells you at what temperature, how long you're going to have before it's cured. So here, when we apply our epoxy, we're going to gently squeeze. You don't have to force it out. The gun actually does that, does the work for you. And as it comes through the end of this, it mixes it together part, perfectly. So it's a two-part two formula. A lot of the epoxies um, come in one container and another container. you got to get them out and mix them together in a in a bowl and try to apply it to the wall and you never get the right rate ratio so this is a really nice system so what we're going to do is we're going to take we're going to quickly apply some of the epoxy to these cracks it's okay if it runs a little bit we'll fix that because it's running right down the wall we're going to where we're going to apply more epoxy anyway so we just want a little bit more in the bowl have that done, we're going to come down the wall in a back and forth motion right, to, right over top of the right over top of the block underneath the carbon fiber where it's going to be placed. It's going to naturally run down the wall so you don't necessarily have to put too much on. Typically you're going to get for one tube of epoxy you're going to get about 12 foot of carbon fiber. So in this case two thirds of a tube will take care of the whole strap. Now make sure you release the gun on the back with a little button here. We're pushing this to keep it from pushing any farther. And I like to rest this on my box. Then I'm going to put all my wet epoxy stuff in. So now we start down the wall. And we just simply lay our, lay our hand down there. And push it into the epoxy. The epoxy has 
actually absorbs into the flavor bed. Now for our pin down here at the bottom, we need to make sure we have a three quarter inch hole drilled, which we already do, right where the wall and the floor meet. Now what we've done, we've installed our pin down here at the bottom. And as we go back over top of this, in the top part of it with epoxy, we'll fill that hole up with epoxy. We're gonna start up top, we make sure we get plenty of epoxy up here around our bracket, underneath of our lap piece, and on the bracket. You know, you can only get them one hand into the epoxy, so I can use the other hand on the bottom. And we get this all nice and wet with epoxy. And I'm going to come back and run my hands over and get it smooth like that. And that works. And if for some reason you miss a spot with epoxy, you can do it after the fact. Or if you have a piece that you cut too short, or two scrap pieces, you're able to overlap them just by making sure they overlap by three inches with the same strength of the tool piece. I want to make sure that I got a nice good coverage here. Plenty of epoxy on it. Epoxy is clear, so if you get it on anything that leaks, it'll mop out within months, but it definitely will be hard. And you can see we've just about completely completed our 75 year flavor. And the wall is now stronger than if you had a steel beam against it. When a concrete wall first breaks, it breaks at 550 psi. This takes it to a 50,000 PSI when it first breaks. At that point, it literally will rip the wall in half. 